Hello and welcome to a new episode of Infiogenic Renaissance. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about meditation. Do you want to know what Buddha or Kutama has to do with psychedelics? Well, probably you'll know in this particular episode. Or no, we'll see. But first of all, uh, let me say that I'm recording from Sri Lanka and as you could have gathered so far, this is a very unusual setting that I have. So this is basically a white wall behind me that I'm recording next to. I've rented an apartment together with my wife here, but unfortunately there aren't many places where I can properly record in silence because there are a lot of noises. I don't know if you hear, there's ocean somewhere there. There's a construction happening nearby. I hope you still can hear me, but if not, please excuse me for that. I will get back to my permanent location in a week's time and will start recording in the proper setting. For now, I guess you have to deal with it. But other than that, Sri Lanka is a really interesting place and I definitely advise to go here, although prices are ridiculous in my view for a country that recently went bankrupt, which is very surprising. So the reason I wanted to talk to you about Vipassana, shit, spoiler alert, yeah, today I'm going to talk to you about Vipassana. What is Vipassana? This is an ancient Buddhist meditation, although it has nothing to do with religion or any rituals or anything like that. Nevertheless, I recently went through my second 10-day Vipassana course, first one I had in 2012 back in India in a town or a city rather called Kanpur. This time it happened on Sri Lanka and it happened with my wife as well, so I finally convinced her to spend 10 days of her life and dedicated to meditation. So why I wanted to talk to you about Vipassana and meditation in particular, for there are many reasons to. So first and foremost, nowadays, probably each person who is either, I don't know, forward thinking or is taking care of one's own mental health is considering meditation because it has scientific value for a human brain and mental health in particularly. And since I'm talking about therapeutic potential of psychedelics and mental health, it is critical that I talk about this experience as well because it is life-changing in a way and it helps some of the suffering I'll talk about it in a bit just look at my notes here I wanted to also mention that Sri Lanka is part of the con is one of the countries that is also waging a stupid war on drugs so they are facing an issue with fentanyl which is a you know, synthetic opioid and this is Unfortunately, a big problem not only for Sri Lanka but other locations as well. One other substance they're fighting with is called methamphetamine or crack or however you call it. Basically, it is killing brains of young adults and not only them. And this is not a psychedelic, just to clarify, this is a drug of a different nature and it's quite toxic for a human brain, whereas psychedelics are not safe for you except for ketamine and MDMA they can be dangerous but of course always remember that a certain precaution measures that you always need to remember such as presence of severe mental illnesses like schizophrenia or bipolar disease or presence of first bloodline relatives with similar mental illnesses other than that if you have a strong psyche you're gonna be okay but don't forget preparation is key I'm not endorsing neither am con neither am I condoning or condemning yeah con condemning I guess the use of psychedelic substances but you need to be aware because you know people can get harmed both mentally and physically if they don't care about the safety measures and they are critical harm reduction is way more important than the stupid and use this war on drugs. The reason I wanted to mention war on drugs in particular is that recently there's been a UN conversation, I don't know whether it's called Congress or something like that. Basically, countries got together and for the duration of the several days, one of the topics that they've been discussing is the regulation of narcotics and their potential harm for human beings and the human rights. and. Interestingly enough, this time there is no single consensus among all members of United Nations, which is great, 
because war on drugs that's been waged for the duration of the past 50 years shows no results it only creates additional harm drugs are there the problems are there and all the crisis that is happening with mental health is there so instead of waging war on drugs some countries are adopting a very different politics which is harm reduction and this is something that resonates strongly with me because harm reduction is way more efficient what it means basically is provide people with knowledge so that they then decide by their own instead of you know just being lulled by those mysteries of you know those substances and without knowing how to treat them they could cause additional harm i mentioned some of it before and i will talk more and more about it but surprisingly enough with all the war that is happening here in drugs in sri lanka cannabis is somehow legal in terms of uh, medical application i'm not quite sure about it because to the best of my knowledge it is illegal to buy it here or you know consume it but there was an individual who told me that medical cannabis is allowed in sri lanka and he's been living here for two and a half years very peculiar in personal per personality uh but yeah anyway i'm not i'm not gonna speculate here i'm gonna operate by facts so please double check that uh, if you're not sure i'm definitely not sure because you know there are tuk-tuks driving nearby and those are like three-wheeled uh, motor vehicles uh brown fossil fossil fuels unfortunately and you know at the back of their tuk-tuk you can see a symbol of uh, cannabis but you know it's kind of illegal and it's there so you know it's somehow present in the country's culture i guess or one way or another but anyway talking about infusions i've never purchased anything illegal here i've just inquired about prices and prices are ridiculous i mean this is insane for one gram of cannabis they charge like 23 euro or something like that for an mdma peel something like 20 euro and yeah of course you are not sure about the quality of the substance so it's better to not risk it because you never know right unless it is a from a proven source let's put it this way or at least it is not prohibited in the choir from some stores that operate in the shadow or between the lines because there are some legal nuances prohibiting one substance but they're not prohibiting a different substance which has slightly different atomic structure so that's why united nations decided to put a couple of other new synthetic drugs on the list and prohibit them with the attempt to end the consumption of drugs here yeah, as if it was working by the way uh colombia is heading uh, towards legalization was it colombia not colombia anyway there are 60 countries in the world where psychedelics are decriminalized and i'm going to one of those countries in june a country called costa rica to participate in a five-day intensive during my psychedelic assisted coaching certification i'm looking forward to it i just bought tickets there yesterday so yeah I'm extremely excited although interestingly enough i've heard from a person that is not safe to live in the center in downtown of san jose and i'm really intrigued like what is happening there so substances are decriminalized but i guess the the level of criminal offense is quite high i'm um, learn about all this and of course share the knowledge with you so far if you're interested to know about sri lanka just put it in the comments don't forget to like share and subscribe and let's go let's talk about the meditation so today i'm going to sit in the single position and not move myself because that's what i've been taught for the duration of 10 days not really but as part of it as, as well so i wanted to talk quickly to you about integration and the meditation in particularly because one thing peculiar about infusions is that even though the experience itself can be life-changing and can alleviate suffering depression PTSD anxiety substance use disorder etc still it is not important as long as you're doing with the insights on the following day say on Monday because whatever you do from now on makes sense your experience on its own in vacuum not really because you can come up to like really meaningful understanding and uh, insight but if you don't act on it 
this is just a trip. It has no therapeutic value for me. So I'm gonna refer to my notes here just to make sure that I'm not uh, driven of course because I got a call to catch in like 40 minutes and I need to, date, to do another episode in Russian right after this. So, therapeutic potential of psychedelics. So at the core of the therapeutic potential of psychedelics, it's one simple idea. They give a broader perspective to a person. They give a understanding they give an understanding to a person about some either like deep issues that they had in their psyche or maybe a re-evaluation of relationships or something like that, maybe a re-evaluation of their life choices and their daily habits and everything like that. Just to remind you, there is a strong connection between gut and brain, meaning whatever you eat can cause whatever you think and how you feel and your mental illness as well so in a nutshell if you don't eat properly you can cause yourself depression okay so i will talk a lot about integration because integration is fundamental for the success of the therapeutic potential of infusions again what you do on a daily basis creates your mental health if you are taking care of your body if you are providing a proper nutrition if you're taking care of a proper sleep regularly that means you are on the right track to build your mental resilience and overcome any type of mental illness that you may face okay that's why therapy is important and therapeutic potential of psychedelics is in that Okay, so it's a person who supports you, a therapist, but also it all depends on you, your choices, whatever you do in your life. That's why this particular meditation called Vipassana is critical. So it helps people alleviate their suffering and be happy pretty much, enjoy life and observe and absorb and acknowledge reality as it is without trying to change it and it may sound dull and strange i mean i'm talking about change here a lot and then i'm talking about vipassana which requires you just being in the moment and not trying to crave for anything or be averse to something or be ignorant so that pretty much means that you should become vegetable right <laughs> not that sexy that's why i'm talking about therapeutic potential of psychedelics here and vipassana because they are slightly contradicting but if you go back to a meaning of the word psychedelic meaning mind manifesting this is what vipassana does it manifests your mind so for the duration of 10 days you are taking a what's it called like uh, not not a promise but um shit yeah, it's called precept, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, you take five precepts. I'm not going to list them right here, right now. If you want to know what they are, just put it in the comments. I'll get back to you. And there's one website where you can find all the passionate centers. It's called Hamma Org. So basically, long story short, it was created by Gautama Buddha two and a half thousand years ago. And it has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with uh, rituals or practices or anything like that. For the duration of the first four days, you are being taught to concentrate your awareness, I guess, your mindfulness, to concentrate your mind on one particular aspect that is underneath your nostrils. And you train your mind for the duration of 10 hours within a day for the duration of four days to be aware of the respiration going in through your nostrils and out of your nostrils. And then on the fifth day, they give you the technique of the Vipassana meditation, which then helps you to recognize the changes, the sensations within your body, and then not react on them. So when you're sitting and you feel pain, and then you concentrate on the pain, you start to observe it, observe it, observe it, and then eventually evaporates. So all the pain centers are located here between our ears. And this is interesting to understand because even though there is physical pain, the majority of it sits here inside our brain. And the idea about Vipassana meditation is that we cause ourselves a lot of harm, a lot of misery, a lot of suffering by going through all those vicious cycles, like wanting something and not getting it, or not liking something or you know have a strong aversion against something and then you know experiencing this all over and over and over again or just being ignorant 
and this creates suffering because people cannot get what they want and then they're not happy so the idea of the meditation is to alleviate that suffering by getting rid of the desires let's put it this way and of course there's no need for you to become a monk as i found out from a monk that was running the vipassana meditation in the center in sri lanka that i participated in he said that once he gets enlightened you have seven days if by the end of the seven days you don't become monk you're dead i don't know how it works it to me it sounds like you're bullshit but i'm not heading to enlightenment i don't want to preach anything that's connected with enlightenment here because i'm far from perfect that's why i'm going to talk to you about the practical application of it and what it helps to achieve is to have this equanimous mind so whatever happens you just acknowledge it and don't react to it if you ride a bike for instance in sri lanka and in southeast asia if you don't ride a bike it's uh, I don't know how do you survive because there is no pedestrian routes the buses here are crazy it just doesn't stop you need to either jump in or jump out of it on the go so you know it's not friendly for disabled people let's put it this way but in general it's just not user friendly in my view so anyway if you're driving a bike and then you hit a bomb on or something happened you just accept it you don't feel angry you don't feel disappointed you you feel like uh, it's nature it's just gonna pass it rises and falls it rises and falls something happens and it disappears over the course of time so there's no need for you to react there's no need for you to crave there for it to end or for something good to start you just accept reality as it is and this is important quality in daily life in the context of mental health because this is one of the core pillars of a healthy mind, being able to stay equanimous, being able to stay in the moment, to observe. And if you want, I can teach you a couple of aspects from the meditation. Just put it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Maybe if it, this particular episode becomes popular and that solely depends on your likes and comments, I can make an additional episode depend uh, additional episode on the possum specifically but i'm just looking at the time here and trying to move further so why did i say that is mind manifesting because for the duration of the first few days you take the precepts the five precepts that i mentioned before one of them is the silence so you don't contact with anybody with either just you know meeting their eyes or talking to them or engaging with another human beings you don't write, you don't listen to music, you don't watch anything, you don't entertain, you are living a life of a monk, pretty much. Uh, disconnected from the external world because you don't have the capacity to use your mobile phone for the duration of nine days. So you're disconnected and you have no clue about what is happening. Where was I heading with this? Right, so within the first few days, mind is just throwing hundreds or thousands of thoughts that you know some urgent stuff that you didn't do some important things yet that i didn't address some people that i didn't come back to some important decisions that i didn't make or something like that i found myself on the fourth day realizing sitting and constantly meditating that at some point in time i see a whatsapp interface in front of me and i'm responding to some message that i either didn't respond yet or planning to in the future and of course in that moment when i realized this i was like what the fuck am i doing here i'm sitting in a meditation in the dhamma center in sri lanka and i'm talking i'm thinking about this this is ridiculous and i just calmly get back my attention to a certain part of my body and continue with the meditation so what i'm saying here is that parts of the subconscious they manifest themselves and Goenka is the teacher the person who made Vipassana extremely popular he spent his lifetime basically dedicated to this particular cause he says that Vipassana go going through Vipassana is like going through surgery so you uncover deep layers of your psyche and then you need to mend the wounds and of course i faced some really interesting insights there some deep-rooted trauma that just reappeared re-emerged and then all of a sudden i realized what i need to do right now but that's not only that that definitely helped me towards alleviating my own suffering i'm not saying that i'm saint that's not the case that's for sure but it did help me to become more equanimous more accepting more aware of my own presence in the moment and ever since i left vipassana 
which was a week ago or actually last five days ago I'm meditating on a daily basis for a duration of one hour. Prior to going into Boston, I did do this for a duration of 17 minutes, which is scientifically proven amount of number of minutes that creates new neural connections in your brain. So I'm gonna wrap up here because I can talk a lot about it. So I'm, I've dedicated this blog to harm reduction and my goal was always to normalize the conversation around the therapeutic potential of psychedelics. But provided all safety measures are there, apologies for the flies going through the uh, frame here because it's a fly season and I guess I'm not that yet enlightened that they would avoid me. Uh, but anyway, so I'm talking about harm reduction and there are two devices that would give to people if it is legal, if you're sure that it's gonna be safe for you take the psychedelic substance in a therapeutic protocol once in your lifetime. It is a life-changing experience. And the second thing that I would advise is to go through a 10-day Vipassana course. It's going to be tough. If you have questions about it, please put them in the comments, but it's definitely worth it. I was able to sit within one pose for the duration of one hour previously, it's just not possible. I'm a fidgety person, I need to change my position, I have, you know, problems with the joints, they become stiff, there's pain kicking in, you know, I'm now able to handle it because I understand that it arises and passes, arises and passes. Thank you very much for watching and as always, thank you for your time stay safe and don't forget to like share subscribe and comment i want to hear your thoughts thank you for watching and until next time